we've been doing a lot of rotating around the x-axis. So let's start rotating around the y-axis and, and see see what we can do, or at least attempt to. So let's say, let me draw my axes. That's y-axis. That's my x-axis. And let's say, well, let's just do it with an example. But uh, you know, we'll call it f of x too, because it'll be generalizable. Let's just draw, I don't know, y equals x squared. Looks something like, well, let me just draw the positive, because we're going to rotate around the y-axis, and it's symmetric anyway. So that's y equals x squared. Right? This is y-axis, this is x-axis. Actually, no, I'm going to stay, keep it general, and then we'll actually solve it particularly. So we'll call this f of x, but clearly, um, this is y equals x squared. So this is f of x. And we know how to. Uh, take the volume if I were to rotate this around the x-axis. But what if I wanted to say, well, let's say the air, the, the, you could, I guess we could call it the area between zero and we'll just, well, let's actually just say between, well, let's say, I'm, I'm trying to determine how general to be. Let's just say between zero and one. I think the boundaries might make sense to you. So this, roughly this area, and I'm going to rotate it around the y-axis now. So I'm going to rotate it around the y-axis now. So what's that final figure going to look like? It's going to look something like a, let's see, the base of it. Let me see how well I could draw it. It's going to look like, nope, that's not what I wanted to do. The base is going to look something like a cylinder, like that. And then the top of it is also going to be, it's going to, oh no, that's not what I wanted to do. Let me draw the side lines. So then it'll, it's going to have a, it's going to look something like that. Something like that, and then we'll have the top of it looks something like that, and then, but it's not just going to be a cylinder, right? If I was doing this entire block, it would be a cylinder, but the inside of it is going to be kind of hollowed out. So let me see if I can, how effective I am at drawing that. I'll do it in a different color, so, you see. so the inside is going to be hollowed out. So it's going to. I don't know if that makes sense to you. That it's kind of like you, you could almost view it as a on the inside it'll look like a bowl, on the outside it will look like a like a like a cylinder or a can. Hopefully that makes sense. You take this and you rotate this around. And the curve that specifies the inside of would be y is equal to x squared. But it would be some it would be it would go it would be it would rotate all the way around, like if I were to draw it on that well. I think that makes sense. The drawing is the hardest part. So how do we do it? Well even the shape might give you an idea. We can't use the disk method any, and and what we were doing before when we were rotating our x-axis that was the disk method because we were essentially imagining each of these particular disks and then summing them up. Now we're going to do something called the shell method. So what's the shell method? What we're going to do is we're going to take instead of taking a bunch of disks and figuring out their um, combined volumes, we're going to take a bunch of shells. So what's a shell? So imagine a rectangle right here. Hope you can see it. Right there. Let's say it's at the point. It's at the point x1. What's its height going to be? Its height's going to be f of x1. F. That's its height. Now imagine taking that that sliver and rotating it around the y-axis. What's it going to look like? Well, it's going to look like a like a like a shell. It's going to look like a cylinder, just like the outside of a cylinder. See how well I can. It's, cannot, it's going to look not too different than that, but I want to draw it well because the intuition is the most important thing. Not getting the problem right. Let's see, let me see if I can draw this respectably. And then we're going to have the bottom of the shell. It will look something like that. Let me finish these lines up. Oh, I think you get the point. Don't have to be. Okay, so it's going to look like a shell like that. And let me see if I can. And so the the outside, oh yeah, the outside of the shell is going to be solid, right? And it'll have some width, right? But the inside is hollow, right? Well, let me do a different color, maybe a darker color to show that that's the inside. It's a hollow, um, you know, it's like a ring essentially. And so what's the height of this ring? Well, I took this. The height is going to be f of x1. So let me do a brighter color so you know what I'm saying. So the height of this ring is f of x1, right? f of x evaluated that arbitrary point we picked up. 
what is going to be what is going to be the surface area of this ring you know this outside well let's think about it it'll be the circumference of this ring times its height so what's the circumference of this ring well circumference let's go back to our basic geometry circumference is equal to 2 pi times the radius so if we know the radius if we know the radius of it we know the circumference well what's the radius well the radius is how far we went from the axis of rotation to that point so that's the radius so in our particular example the radius is x1 right the radius is equal to x1 it's that x point that we're evaluating it at right so circumference is going to be equal to 2 pi times that point that we're evaluating at and so then the sur the surface area this magenta thing that i filled in that's going to be equal to their circumference times this height which we already said is f of x1 so we could say right, let's call it area surface surface area is equal to circumference times height which is equal to 2 pi x1 times f of x1 all right so we figured out the 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 surface area of this now how do we figure out the volume well the volume of the shell well what's the width of it how how thick is this ring how what's this thickness right here it's you know it's a very small thickness but we took this sliver and the sliver as we learned in in previous calculus the width of this of this little rectangle is dx and you know when we take the integral it's going to get infinitely smaller and smaller and we'll have infinitely more and more of them so the width of this is dx right let me draw it big that's a horrible looking so if this is the sliver if that's the sliver its width is dx its height is f of x1 right x1 will be right in the center and then its distance from the center is of course x1 hopefully that makes sense so what's the volume of this shell so the volume of the shell this shell not this one the volume of the shell is going to be equal to the surface area of the shell times how wide that surface is and that width is dx it's going to equal this times dx so the volume of that shell is 2 pi x1 times f of x1 times dx and i think you see where i'm going with this now so what would be the volume uh, of of the entire rotated figure this thing here well i'm just going to sum up each of these shells right i have one shell there and then here i'll have a slightly less high shell and up here i would have a much bigger shell and i'm add them up right here's one shell that goes around then there'll be another shell here and i'll i'll add them all up and that's taking the integral so the total volume of the figure when i rotate it around the y axis is going to be and my boundaries are from 0 to 1 0 to 1 2 pi and we're this one i just told you a particular x1 but we're going to sum them over all of the x's so it's going to be 2 pi x f of x dx right and this is just a constant so you could call it 2 pi times f x f of x so let's take a particular example let's let's do it for x squared let's say the function is x squared so in this case the volume is going to equal let's take the 2 pi out 2 pi integral 0 to 1 x times f of x f of x in our case is x squared, which I drew earlier. dx equals 2 pi. This is just x to the third, right? x to the third. So it's going to be 2 pi times the antiderivative of x to the third. Well, that's x to the fourth over 4. Evaluated at 1 minus it evaluated at 0. Well, that equals, and I think I'll have enough space, 2 pi times, well, 1 to the fourth is 1, so 1 fourth. And then 0, well, minus 0. So it's 2 pi times 1 fourth. And so that's pi over 2. Pi over 2. That's the volume. And we just rotate it around the y axis. I will see you in the next.